another example of an application involving quadratic equations, and we're going to solve it by factoring. I'll give you a minute to read this problem. Consecutive, even integers. Uh, lots of algebra problems involve consecutive even integers, consecutive odd integers, just consecutive integers. we got to kind of discern uh, what, what that's all about. In this case, we have consecutive even integers. Let's just throw out some numbers. So we can, first of all, consecutive even integers would be something like 6 and 8 and 10 and 12. Those are all integers and they're consecutive, they're in order, and they're even. So in this particular problem, I'm looking for two consecutive even integers. So my answer might be six and eight, or my answer might be 24 and 26, or, you know, all kinds of possibilities. But all I need you to see is that the first one is some value, and the next one is two greater than that value consecutive even integers. So what I'm going to ask us to do is let's establish the fact that the first one is going to be x. And if I wanted to write this number 8 as an algebraic expression, I would take this number and add 2 to it. I take the 6 and add 2 to it. So I take the x and add 2 to it. So I'm going to say that x represents the first integer and that x plus 2, so 2 more than that, represents the second integer. And let's take this away now. Let's go ahead and solve this problem. So um, many algebra problems, would you state for yourself what your, the letter x is going to represent? And if this was consecutive odd integers, that would be the same expression, because odd numbers are separated by two units. So if this was x, then this is x plus 2 because that next odd integer is 2 greater than the first one. That really bothers people because they have trouble adding an even number and it representing an odd integer. But remember, this is an odd number, and if you take an odd and add something even to it, you get an odd. So let's just remember that. Um, let's see. The product of two consecutive even integers, product means to multiply. So x times that x plus 2 is, it says the product is or equals 224, and I want to solve this by factoring. You know, there is this thing called the quadratic formula that, that solves quadratic equations, but I my focus here is on solution by factoring, um, but we will at some point do that as well. I have to clean this up. I absolutely have to clean this up in order to use the zero product rule. And I'm going to show the step this time. I've got to subtract 224. I'm going to kind of show it right here. That's supposed to be a minus sign. Let's, let's do it like this. So let's subtract the 224. So over here, I'm going to have x squared plus 2x minus 224 now equals zero. So I can use that zero product rule. Man, easy tri trinomial factor, kind of, because there's a 1 in front of the x squared term. But I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be a negative 224. But I want them to add to be something really small. So they have to have different signs. If their product is going to be a negative 224, and they're going to add to be the number 2, One's got to be a positive sign, and one's got to be a negative sign. And they better be very close in value for them to add to be just the integer, just the whole number 2. So you know what I do when I have a problem like this? I get my calculator out. Would you get it out? And would you take the square root of 224? Square root of 224. Uh, as I recall, it was something like 14.9 or something, or close to 15. So I'm going to take the number 224, and I'm going to divide it by an even number that's close to 15. Take your calculator again now. Divide 224 by 14 instead of 15, and tell me if there's any chance that um, 14 goes into 224 16 times. 
So those two factors were close to 15. I could have also gone to 16. You had 224 and divided by 16. And I had to put the bigger number with the plus sign and the smaller number with the minus sign so that they would add to be a positive 2. And finally, I get to factor this into x plus 16 and x minus 14. Um, again, because of those, those two values, those products. And then using the zero product rule, I'm going to come on over here and, and erase this scenario, this, this table over here. And I'm going to let x plus 16 equals 0. That's the zero product rule. I'm going to let x minus 14 equals 0. Here I'm going to add 14 to both sides, so I'll find out that x is equal to 14. And here I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides, and I find out that x is equal to a negative 16. This is not a real story, a real scenario, and I want two consecutive even integers. So if one of my answers was a negative 16, if x was a negative 16, what is a negative 16 plus 2 to get my next integer, the next number in line? That's a negative 14. So one of the options is a negative 16 and a negative 14. Those are consecutive. This is a smaller number. This is the bigger number. And they are in a row. They are even numbers in a row. The other pairing is the number 14 for x. And if I come over here and put in 14 for x and add 2 to it, I get 16. So here's my other pair of even integers whose product is a positive 224. You can check those to see if they work. I'm going to make this a short segment. I'm going to do one more application in the next clip.